you're making your game maker game and you need a great introduction. You need a good title page screen. Uh, and so I want to show you how you can do that using game maker. So the steps we're going to do uh, is we're going to create a background for our game title room. And I've already created a graphic I can use and edit it. So we're just going to load it up. Okay, so we're going to upload a graphic onto a background. And then we're going to create our room. We will move it to the top. We will add that game title background. Then we're going to create a play button. We'll need a sprite and an object. And we'll program it to go to the first room when you click it with a mouse. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go over to Game Maker. Here we are. And uh, first things first, let's create our background. I'm going to go ahead and close the other folders on here. Backgrounds, there's a set of folders. We can use backgrounds for entire backgrounds for a screen. We can also use it as tile sets so that we can build out rooms. And for our case, we're going to call it BG for background, underscore, and we're just going to call it game uh, title like this. BG game title. We're going to load a background. So now we have to find a background for it, guys. And here is the background I created. So I'm going to click open. And I'm going to max maximize it. And so here's kind of a description of the game with a title. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay. So you, you, this assumes you've already created a title page that has the name of the game credits and and you can style it any way you want and so we need to create a room for that now we've already created two rooms so I'm gonna have to create a, a third one and we're gonna have to move that room to the top so I'm just gonna drag it up to the top now room four room zero room two they don't make sense anymore so I'm gonna rename them all I'm gonna have, have this RM for room underscore and we'll call it game title again game title and now room zero will just become room one because that, that's easier. It makes more sense. And I might as well follow the same naming conventions I did before. And, you know, it's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, I think it makes more sense when it's consistent. Okay. So there we go. We got our rooms. Um, and uh, so here's our room. We're going to go ahead and add it as a background. So you want to click on the backgrounds tab in your room. Oh, we want to go back up to, I'm sorry, I want to do this on game title. I want to make sure I'm on game title. So I double click it to make sure we're here. We go to backgrounds and then where it has background here, I'm going to click any backgrounds I see. I'm going to put game title. Let's take a look at it. I take that off. And by default, your rooms are going to have tile horizontal, tile vertical. I'm going to uncheck those, but I will check stretch and it actually stretched it out to match the room size. So just make sure you select the background and then you choose stretch and uncheck tile. Okay, And that's it. So we've got our game title. The only problem is uh, we'd have no way of going from this room to the next. And the other thing is note, I put the game title at the very top of rooms. And as I look at the title names here, I'm beginning to think maybe I should just call it room. It's not that difficult. It's more easy to read. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Forget the RM. And that's just personal preference here. Mainly because it's so tiny here, the text. It's easier for me to read there. I'm getting old, you know. All right, so now we need a sprite and an object for a play button that will allow us to begin the game. So we're going to go to sprites. So I'm going to open up the sprites folder. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to create a sprite. Now, when you, if you have GameMaker 8.0, they have a folder structure for your sprites. By default, it's probably set to the following. It's probably not under buttons. You probably start in Maze Platform. Okay. Whether you are in Maze Platform or buttons or somewhere else, if you want to get around and see the other sprites available, just click the up one level, and you will say, see that there's sprites for board game, bouncing balls, buttons. That's what we're going to use. And on buttons, we have all kinds of buttons. We're looking for the one that says play. Uh, if you want to, you can have another button with info that you can program to give information. You can have another one for help if you wanted to. In our case, it's just play, so I open it. So there's my sprite, and I will name it SPR 
play. Click OK. All right, so I have a sprite. Now I need an object. Let's go ahead and close that window. I'm going to right click on objects, create it, and I will name it obj underscore play. I will set the sprite to play. And I just need it visible. It doesn't need to be solid. It doesn't need to be persistent. In fact, that would make no sense at all. So um, we're going to have one event. That is the mouse click. And we're going to use the left button because that is the most commonly used button on a mouse. That's what most people will use. So it's left button. When we click it, we're going to go to the next room. Now, you have a couple options here. You can either just go to the next room and know that it will go to, in our case, room one, because that's the second one after in our rooms. Or we could, if we weren't sure, and we might move rooms around, we can do the one here, which is a different room. So if you click different room, you can choose what that room will be. So this is cool because if you want to have objects that transport you anywhere in the game world, you would use the different room. And so we're going to use room one because that's our first room anyway. And we're going to add a transition effect and test it out. We're going to see what create from left looks like, and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go to the game title room. So I double click it, and I want to add an object. So I click on objects. I click on here, and I look for object play, and I put it in the room and I like to center it, put it in a nice location. Now let's test it out and see how that works. There we go. All right, it's loading now. It's been buggy. It's not been buggy. It's been sluggish. So, okay, here we go. There's my play button. I'm in the first room. I click play. And see, it just swipes across the screen like that. Let's test a few more options so you can see a few of the uh, few of the animations that you have. If my screen doesn't stay blank. <laughs> I think I crashed my computer. <laughs> oh, there we go. Phew. All right. Uh, so just let me remind you, the key here is your room, your first room needs to be the top one. So if you move it down, it will, it will appear second. Okay, so we got to make sure the game title room is at the top. And then we want to make sure on the play button, we program it to, with the left button, go to whatever room we want to go to. Okay, we're going to just change the transition. You saw what create from left looked like. Let's see what shift from left looks like and test that one out. So I click play. That didn't look that much different. Let's try. Uh, let's try one of the other ones. Let's try a push from left. See what push from left looks like. By the way, don't forget to save your changes just in case you crash the computer. If I crashed it, I would have lost all that work. That would be sad. Of course, I'm recording this. I just watch it. And... All right, let's go ahead and press play. Ah, see, now that I like that one because the room I was in moved over and it pushed the room over. So that's a good one. However, sometimes too many of these animations can be annoying. So you might want to just go with caution. At this point, I hope you have uh, you create some awesome games that will change the world or at least provide hours of endless entertainment for you and your loved ones. Okay, good luck.